coming up on City Spotlight. Season 10 rolls on, and we're on location in Mattoon. First, we'll talk education in Mattoon at Lakeland College with Lakeland College President Dr. Josh Bullock. Josh will share the latest on facility work at Lakeland, Neil Hall, the Fieldhouse, and physical improvements on and off Lakeland's campus. Then we'll talk economic development in Mattoon with Ed Dowd, Executive Director of the Mattoon Chamber of Commerce. Ed has the latest on the many business-related developments in Mattoon, including an update on the new sports complex. We're on location and talking education and economic development in Mattoon, next on City Spotlight. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com. Hello and welcome to another edition of City Spotlight. As you can see, we are on location for this episode, a new episode on Mattoon as we tape here on October 10th, 2023. In this episode on Mattoon, we're going to be taping here at Lakeland College with our familiar guest, Dr. Josh Bullock, president of Lakeland College. Josh, great to see you again. Good to see you too, Ramin. It's been a pleasure to talk, tape with Josh all these times here on City Spotlight. Now we're now at season 10. Uh, stop counting, Josh, because it's almost an annual thing every season. <laughs> Last time we did tape with Josh was a little over a year ago to end season eight. So many new things at Lakeland yes. at the time, and we look forward to catching up with that. Uh, we're in October, just before we hit the record button. Can't believe the semester is flying by. So how is the fall semester going at Lakeland? Fall semester is going really well. Um, it, it's hard to believe we're nearly halfway through the fall semester. But so far it's been going very well. The campus is busy, students are engaged. We've had a lot of great student activities, wonderful participation. It is so exciting to see campus as vibrant as it was you know, four, five, six years ago. Yeah, we are to that point. We're no longer asking the COVID questions Absolutely. or the COVID answers. So let's dive right into the talking points, Josh. And pretty much every time we come on with a education person, whether K through 12 or higher ed, such as Josh, it's facility work that we talk about because schools are constantly updating, upgrading and building for the future. Let's start talking about Neil Hall. A uh, little over 20 years old and major, major renovations there. We did conduct major renovations this year and it was through a capital development board project. So that's about a 46, 47,000 square foot building. Complete renovation, new uh, HVAC types of systems, new flooring, new paint, new carpet, new furniture, uh, changed around some rooms. It is absolutely beautiful. We wanted to make sure we created that state of an art facility. Uh, one of the really neat pieces in there, that, that houses our our health wings, so all of our nursing programs, medical assisting, those types of programs. Uh, through a generous partnership with Sarah Bush Lincoln, we were able to put in some new simulation rooms in that facility. Uh, so that is really has become a state-of-the-art health training facility. And of course, we have our art labs in there, where our various studios, and a bunch of other types of courses as well uh, that we offer in there. But the facility is absolutely beautiful. Uh, HVA systems, C systems are working flawlessly. So. We're really proud that that project is, has now come to fruition. Great to follow up with you, Josh. All these episodes that we've taped over this time here on City Spotlight, seeing the evolution of all the places, and in this case, Lakeland College, obviously uh, still fresh in my mind. Uh, you've given me the grand tour of the Luther Student Center, and now Neil Hall. Is it unrecognizable to you, that much renovation? It's, you know, I don't think it's necessarily not unrecognizable, it's the evolution. Right. You know, as we evolve, as, as our communities evolve and the educational needs evolve, we have to evolve with it. And uh, it's, it's so exciting to see a board of trustees that's willing to support that evolution. Mm -hmm. And support that evolution, which the best part is not impacting property taxes Correct. or tuition for our students. So we're able to do this very judiciously. Uh, our board just approved a 10-year master facility and master landscaping plan. Uh, Neil Hall was part of that. We have a number of other projects. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we renovated the field house. We, we yes. uh, as part of that renovation, put in two women's locker rooms for volleyball and basketball, renovated the men's locker room, created a nice, beautiful cheer space, a new space for athletic trainers. So all those pieces that are helping the campus to evolve to continue to serve the needs of our community. You don't upgrade uh, the field house, as you just mentioned, getting some TLC. You're upgrading facilities and aspects of the field house that impact student athletes. Absolutely. And Absolutely. And, and the other piece that's just starting on campus is uh, replacing our softball press box, which may seem like a very small project, but uh, that's another piece that really has an impact on our athletes because it allows us to broadcast games, it allows mm -hmm. us to have storage, it allows us to have place for the, the teams to meet and plan. So you know, it's all those really little things that we know impact our students and our student athletes in various ways. Uh, you have uh, your strategic plan uh, focusing on modernizing and through these last two things that you just talked about, Neil Hall, the field house, uh, elaborate some more on the importance of modernizing what you have here at Lakeland. You know, I think again, it's about uh, ensuring that we, we meet the needs of the community. So um, one of the other big projects we've undertaken is our new Rural Development Technology Center, which is now the Effingham uh, Technology right. Center. Mm -hmm. um, that facility is the old Patterson okay. uh, facility, Patterson Technologies. And that facility is going to be dedicated specifically to new and emerging fields. So we're right. looking at housing the Effingham Regional Career Academy in that facility, right. moving the, um, the facilities from all of the program that was at Cluthy into that facility, and really focusing on being a technologically advanced facility. Imagine a facility that has augmented reality labs and virtual reality yes. labs and makerspace and the things that are going to help develop the future workforce for our communities. So that's another piece of, of just the modernization of campus that uh, we're really proud of and we can't wait to see that project be completed sometime in the fall of 24. It's cool to hear you have another, another hand down uh, off campus. So Lakeland still continuing to grow even in another place such as Effingham. Absolutely. Pretty neat. Very good. Uh, let's go back to some of the modernizing and you had a beautiful beautification project done by one of your fraternity sororities that you wanted to highlight and uh, how they took a little initiative to uh, upgrade and beautify an, uh, an aspect of campus. Yes, yeah, so our Phi Theta Kappa group, which is one of our honor societies, uh, they approached us and said, hey, can we help to modernize some space mm -hmm. outdoors for students so that students have a place to relax? And on campus years ago, the campus had built these sunken gardens, which over time it had become overgrown, they had become uh, just places that weren't maintained. So Phi Theta Kappa leadership undertook one of, the, one of the sunken gardens and created a beautiful space for students, put in some water features, um, dug up some of the old overgrowth, created some nice pathways, put some beautiful benches in there and uh, umbrellas and canopies and really created <clears throat> with lighting a space that students enjoy. And, to me, what really made it rewarding was last week walking through that space on a nice day, and we even had a student sleeping on one of the benches in between <laughs> classes. So you know if they're sleeping, they feel comfortable in the space. But um, we're proud of the connection that our students have to the college, and it really speaks to the community we have here at Lakeland College. They, they value where they are, whether, whether they are a local a student that is local or not, that they want to continue to uh, help, help Lakeland grow. Absolutely. Very good. Uh, tell us a little bit about the Student Wellness Center. Well, one of the, the things we focused on, of course, you can't pick up any, any article about academics, whether it's uh, higher education, K-12, and hearing about the mental health issues that students are facing. And these are issues students have faced forever, but it's really come to light that students, especially when they're in a new environment, they come to, to, to college for the first time, so many new things, so many new experiences, to have those students have a place where they can come talk to somebody. Our wellness center couples uh, mental health along with physical health, so mm -hmm. our, our college nurse, um, our mental health specialist, those individuals are all there in one location now to help serve students in the variety of needs that they have, both for physical and mental health. And that couples really nicely with our new uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging initiative. So this past year, we hired a DEIB coordinator, mm -hmm. and that's to make sure that every student that comes to Lakeland College feels that sense of belonging here, feels a part of who we are in our mission, and that uh, they hold us accountable for creating an environment that's inclusive for every student, regardless of their background, regardless of how they may feel, we wanna make sure every student feels welcome on Lakeland's campus. Certainly having a facility like that, as again, we talked off camera just before taping, we're not talking about uh, those hardships and tough times that we experienced during COVID, 
but I think this is a, certainly a, a reflection of reacting to those students' needs on the, from the mental capacity. They need they can go somewhere if they're going through a tough time. Absolutely, college is stressful, <laughs> and as we've learned, life itself is stressful, and it's helping the students have tools to work with that. So, for instance, one of the things we do is we offer the call map at no charge to all students. It's something small, but you know, when a student's having that time when maybe they're feeling a little overwhelmed with homework or a test coming up or just things happening in life, we want to give them tools to be able to adapt to that so that their educational endeavors don't suffer and they're able to, as a human being, work through those challenges while they continue their educational journey. One of the things that certainly um, came out of the COVID times, if, you want, if I want to call it that, was uh, technology and being able to communicate in different ways. And one thing that you talked about the last time we taped with you, a little over a year ago, you uh, were very proud of the HyFlex technology and how that's a new tool for students to utilize. It is, so HyFlex, imagine students who might have life events happen. We, we serve 15 counties, so maybe they can't get to class that morning, mm -hmm. maybe they're ill and they don't wanna miss class. The HyFlex allows students in, for specific courses to be able to come in remotely and participate in real time with those instructors and the other students in the room. Uh, and have that classroom experience while they can't be there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've really focused on trying to make sure Lakeland College remains accessible, and that means also retooling how we think about programming. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a new programming called Tech Today, so many mm -hmm. of our, our technical or vocational programs, we're trying to structure them so that students can have a life where they, that we know they need to work, where they can work, mm -hmm. they can engage in life activities, and come to school, so that they're not seeing those things competing. So Tech Today, allows a number of our technology programs, students to come to class just two days a week. That means the remaining three days during the weekday and on the weekends, they can spend that time working, taking care of uh, family or friend obligations, trying to find ways to make sure we utilize not only technology, but just generally how we um, offer curriculum to be compatible with the lives of today's individuals, busy, busy lives of our students and those in our communities. All right, very good. I have a list of things here that you provided me. Uh, Josh always provides me with a, a variety of talking points before we can tape, and I appreciate that. And um, there are things that are impacting colleges, and uh, I guess we'll use the word issues. And one of those things that we're hearing a lot about just in general that's impacting a little bit of everyone is AI, artificial intelligence. Uh, how is that impacting or how is that impacting Lakeland at all? And how are you, you know, what do you think on the subject? Well, you think about AI really just came to the forefront in yeah. about November, December of 2022. It's relatively new. So it's relatively new. It's been there for a long time, mm -hmm. but I think really hit the mainstream recently. So we've been spending a lot of time working with our faculty and staff to understand the impact of artificial intelligence, not just in the classroom and how we navigate those tools to help facilitate a learning experience versus something we fear, but also in the way we operate uh, from a business sense as an institution and the things we do. So. Uh, we're blessed to have a number of faculty on campus who have really become, I would use the term experts in AI, as much as you can be an expert in AI today, mm -hmm. who've really studied AI considerably and understanding how do we take AI and, and use it as a tool to integrate in the classroom. You know, I think many educators, you're on one side or the other where you, you want to find a way to prevent its use because it can be used for nefarious things, mm -hmm. you know, maybe cheating, writing papers for you, but we have the other group that's saying, how do we use it as a teaching tool? Right. And that's where we really want to focus, is understanding um, how, do we, how do we use it as a tool that students can take AI and better themselves as a professional when they leave Lakeland College. Um, there's a lot of great information out there that talks about how high school students and college students now are expecting institutions of higher education to train them on how to use AI tools productively in their discipline. And that's where we really have an opportunity is to say, not just ChatGPT or, uh, or Clyde or all of the other tools that are out there or Google Bard, right. but looking across AI in general, how do we use those tools to help become more productive individuals, more productive citizens, uh, and create a better work environment and society, hopefully for everybody as a whole. AI is a very futuristic thing that like you said, we're, we're all kind of figuring out how can it be used in the correct way. Uh, in our last minute or so, Josh, uh, if you want to give a shout out to your staff here at Lakeland College and how they continue to uh, serve the students in the community. You know, I think one of the things that makes Lakeland College the value that it is, is the family environment. And every one of our staff is focused on creating a student experience from our physical plant staff, our custodians keeping the classrooms clean, to those who are helping students register and providing services, uh, to our faculty who 
um, not only keep abreast of the latest technology, but I see it firsthand how dedicated they are to their students, taking time outside of normal class hours to meet with students who are, again, busy students working and, and living lives. And, you know, we wouldn't be who we are without people. AI can be there, technology can be right. there, but the, the reality is it's the people who work in an organization that make it special. And I'm blessed to work in an organization where we have absolutely amazing faculty and staff that every day come to work wanting to help our students. Well, we're here, we're talking. AI is down the road and hopefully it doesn't replace people like you <laughs> Right, and I, absolutely. So we can keep on taping. <laughs> President of Lakeland College, Dr. Josh Bullock. Josh, it's always a treat to come and tape with you wherever our first time taping in the President's office at here at Lakeland College. Great to talk Lakeland here on City Spotlight. Thanks for me and always appreciate the time. Thank you so much. And we'll have more about Matt Toon later in this episode, but first let's take a look at some of the upcoming activities going on in Matt Toon. And we're back here on City Spotlight, this new On Location episode on Mattoon as we can continue the start of season 10. We're taping here on October 12th and we're back at a familiar spot in downtown Mattoon. We've changed locations, the Mattoon Chamber of Commerce offices, which means we're talking with a familiar guest, Executive Director of the Mattoon Chamber of Commerce, Ed Dowd. Ed, always a pleasure to have you on the program. I always love your program and being able to tout all the great things that are happening in our community. So it's a pleasure to have you here as well. Awesome, and a lot going on in Mattoon, and it's been, as we were talking before we hit the record button, the last handful of episodes that we've taped on Mattoon that we've interviewed Ed, just so much going on in Mattoon. So uh, uh, let, let's get right to it, Ed, and uh, sure. in no particular order, we're gonna talk about a variety of economic developments, uh, regardless of when they opened or will be opening, we're just gonna fire away. Warren James Winery, uh, talk about that addition to the area. Yeah, it's so exciting. We have two local entrepreneurs, brothers, actually, uh, Cole and Blake Pierce, mm -hmm. and they decided to open a winery, which you know is a fantastic opportunity to have a new welcoming part of our community that some you know it really helps as draw us as a destination for people to travel to maybe work to live. So we're so excited about the winery. It's uh, just outside the city limits. Lerner Road. Lerner Road. Yep, just outside the city limits. And they got 40 acres. They're going to grow their own wine grapes. They already have them started. It does take a couple of years before they mature enough mm -hmm. to make wine, but they have plenty of wine in stock and they have food and uh, they have opportunities for small weddings and beautiful outdoor facility where you can just, you know, check out the, the vineyards and just uh, have a beautiful opportunity to you know, relax and enjoy some wine. So it's a restaurant great. and bar opened up at the end of July. Yes. All right, next on the list that I have, Ed, a uh, new distribution facility for John Deere. Yes, yeah, so John Deere has decided to make Mattoon home. They, what the exciting thing is the old R.R. Donnelly plant, which was LSC Communications, wow. the latest, that was the latest iteration of it. It was sitting there empty, it's a million square feet, and they are taking over 900,000 square feet of it to make parts distribution and even some light manufacturing is gonna be taking place there. They're working with Phoenix Investors who are the owners. They're gonna have a, up to 200 jobs out there. Wow. So just a great chance for a dormant facility to get you know, repurposed and um, having a Fortune 500 company is just so exciting to have that in the area. That is a big name and it's great to hear you mentioned the word dormant facility. Yes. It's great that the facility gets repurposed and used for something else. Absolutely. Just very exciting. Very exciting to hear about that name coming to the area. Uh, also in that vicinity of uh, Mattoon and also in Coles County, uh, North American Lighting. Over there across from the Mars plant, North American Lighting obviously has a facility over in Paris. Now we have one in Mattoon. Yeah, what's great about that is Just Right Manufacturing was in that location mm -hmm. and they wanted to expand. So they moved to a, just a, about a quarter mile uh, east of there and they are exciting. They got a new plant and then North American Lighting moved in with 80 jobs to start. They were wanting to expand to 200 jobs wow. by the end of next year. They'd make... Um, all the lights for all the different car manufacturers. It's amazing the technology that goes into that. And I got a tour of the plant and I'm telling you, it's such a beautiful plant. So exciting. 
you know, it's uh, it's just great and a lot of opportunity there for more jobs. So uh, there are a lot of jobs just between the last two places that we've talked about. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of manufacturing opportunities in the Mattoon area. Yes. Closer to where we are over by the Cross County Mall, the former uh, former location of the former Taco Bell there in front of the Cross County Mall. There's a Dunkin Donuts going up. Yes, we're very excited about Dunkin Donuts coming into the area. They're having, a, as everyone knows, you know, with what's going on in the world, they're having a few construction delays, but their goal is to open by the early next month. Uh, so, or sooner if they can, they're waiting on a few parts, but you know, it's exciting to have another new opportunity for a retail establishment, you know, and the nice thing is Taco Bell didn't leave. They just moved to a different location. Yeah. So it's not like we lost a retail. Taco Bell has a new location. This is just the former location. Correct. So, and, that's, correct. and that's a great location in the front of the mall. Absolutely. So Charleston Absolutely. has a new Dunkin' Donuts. Matching with the Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> what works for one works for the other. Absolutely. Very good. Ed, I want to ask you uh, for your thoughts on, on a facility that opened up um, less than a year ago at the end of 2022. I got a little soundbite from you there uh, when we, uh, we were taped at the grand opening of the Hilton Garden Inn and Sticks Restaurant that opened up at the end of 2022. You drive by there every day, prime location, you see cars in the parking lot. What's been the impact? Yeah, it's just, so, just, just less than a year old. Yeah, it's so exciting you know, that we have this new hotel. And as you said, every time you drive by it, it's full. It's a gorgeous facility. It's one of our higher end re, um, hotel and restaurant complexes in the area. So it's just exciting to have it. The other thing is with the sports complex coming, mm -hmm. it's you know it's it's going to be an absolute need along with maybe potentially other hotels. Right. So even even without the sports complex traffic and and things going on, it's already getting full. So it's just exciting that we're able to the area is able to accommodate and fill a brand new hotel 104 uh, room hotel so it's just great i, have an, I think i have my, my 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 bullet points in the correct order because we're going to talk about the sports complex and i think the last time that it was mentioned on city spotlight it didn't have this title yet but it's the emerald acres sports connection that is the name of the sports complex correct. and if you've driven through mattoon lately here as we tape here in the fall of 2023 the ground has been dug up I saw some bulldozers out there this morning. Yes. And uh, the ground is there. Ed, uh, give us a peek into the future. Uh, you have some, a list of some of the retail that might be coming. Yeah, so what's great, what they're working on right now is the indoor component of the sports complex. And what's exciting about that, they're not only are you gonna have the sports complex where they can do, I think it's up to 18 basketball, volleyball, Pickleball, they're going to have a, It's all a kinds silly of, number of courts. <laughs> yeah, silly number of courts. And it's going to be multifunctional. So they can even use it as a convention center and all kinds of different things. So it's real exciting. Sarah Bush Lincoln is going to be a major sponsor of it. And they're going to actually move their health clinic into the indoor facility. That's correct. So that people who are there for sports or people who are there, you know, in the area... You know they can have a place to go if they have a medical need or anything like that or, so it's just a, or uh forbid uh one of the athletes competing sports? there has a little bit of a injury there on the spot they could probably go right right there, there. they'll be right there so that's really exciting the, the outdoor component's going to start next year but as you mentioned a lot of retailers have said you know this is a fantastic project we want to be on board we have uh seven who are very, very close to, I mean, a lot of them are either signed or they're very close to signing. We have Kohl's, Famous Footwear, Michaels, Beals, uh, Ulta. All names that we've all heard of. Yeah, absolutely. And so, again, more great retail coming to Mattoon. Absolutely. Uh, obviously, you, uh, your job here at the Chamber of Commerce, anytime you get a new retail to come to town, but when you have that many additional ones, wow, you got to be... Oh, well, just thrilled. It's just so thrilling. And not only with all these retailers, there's also restaurants who are very close to signing on board and possibly even another hotel or two um, that they're really working on to try to get there. So it's just so great to have all this economic development in our in our community. Um, it's just we just can't say enough of how wonderful it is. And this is a grand scale project that's going to take a couple of years. So what will be the Obviously, it's end of 2023. There's obviously just ground there that's been laid. What's the first thing that will be up and will it be next year? Yes. So they're hoping by the, by the fall of, or uh, winter of next year that the indoor facility will be completed. So a year from operational. now. Yeah, they're, oh. they're hoping that the indoor facility. And then they're going to start on the outdoor facility, which has you know, the, the latest and greatest um, fields 
you know, with the latest and greatest turf so that, you know, they can, 15 minutes after a heavy rain, they could run the fields. They're also going to have a JUCO level uh, baseball diamonds and, and softball diamonds. So it's just a, it's just going to be a great opportunity. The, the, spor the sports opportunities are unlimited there. And that, that could be a whole nother show just talking about what things Mattoon could host down the road. Absolutely. Ed Dowd with the executive director of the Mattoon Chamber of Commerce. Ed, I wish I had a, a, a more time, but we went through a lot here and there's <laughs> a lot of exciting things to follow up on yes. here in 2024. We look forward to having you on down, down the road. Always a pleasure. And yeah, like I said, anytime we'd love to update you on all the new exciting things that are happening. So. All right, very good. We've been talking Mattoon. We started with Lakeland College, then we talked Mattoon Chamber of Commerce with Ed Dowd and the business scene here in Mattoon. That's our latest City Spotlight episode on Mattoon. Thanks for watching. Thank you for tuning in to City Spotlight. You can check out past episodes, including the one you're watching right now on YouTube. To check out recent episodes of Central and Southeastern Illinois towns featured on City Spotlight, search on YouTube, City Spotlight, with the show number and the name of the town. Listed on your screen are the last five episodes of City Spotlight. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com.